for taking the time. We have a few media members on the call, so we will go ahead and get started right away. Um, we'll start, uh, as a reminder, please use the raised hand icon so I know you have a question. And we'll get started with Brian Sandalow from the Chicago Sun-Times. Uh, hey, Ezra, I hope all is well uh, this afternoon. Um, How are you doing, Brian? Good, how are you? Good. Good. Um, I was just wondering, um, you know, with the with the squandered leads late and the late goals allowed, and the fact that you've talked, you know, you you've really stressed that and really made that a, a big point for you, though. Um, are you concerned that your message just isn't getting through to the players about how to close matches? No. Um, and the reason why is it's it's because marking up on on set pieces uh, and it's not just late in the game it's just throughout the game our, our set piece marking just have not been good enough and it's it's a fixable thing so it's not something where you're you're telling the players about it and there's no hope of it being fixed you know if we were sitting here talking about giving up uh three goals per game uh and, and losing games three nothing and stuff like that and, you know, I kept repeating about what the issues were and, and it, it wasn't changing. I would be more worried. I'd be more concerned. But I think, um, and we talked to the players um, about, you know, if we could just be even league average in defending set pieces, how much further up the table we would be. And so that's something that uh, as a group, uh, we've decided uh, we can fix, we have to fix, and we will fix. Um, coming up this week will not be no... Uh, lesser task because of you know Nashville and their prowess uh, in their attacking set pieces. So it's going to be a, another big test for us, but we just have to get better at that. I think the, the rest of our game has improved so much that it's just that last part that we're just not uh, very good at right now, And but we're working at it and it's very, very fi fixable. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Alex Calabrese. Hey, thanks, e. Um, Hey, Coach, hope you're doing well. I just wanted to ask about the availability of a couple of players. Carlos Tehran um, had the injury in the previous game, and then Jairo Torres and Shakiri coming back to full fitness. And on those last two as well, your two designated players, the players who have come in as their injury replacements have done quite well uh, in their place. So we just what are your thoughts on that situation with the two DPs and their competition that's been doing quite well? Yeah, well, we have to be very careful with um, both Shaq and Torres um, because they're that uh, they're so much Im important to our, what we do here and to our team. Um, beyond just being DPs, they're very good football players. Um, and yes, without uh, them being on the pitch for the past five or six weeks or so uh, regularly, we've we've been we've done all right. Um, but we can't um, uh, negate uh, their capabilities, their abilities. Uh, to make us a better team. Uh, we feel that they make us a better team. That's why we have them on the team. That's why they have such labels to them. So we have to find a way to integrate them with the, the players. And that's what you you need from a, uh, from a team, from players who maybe don't normally play as much. When a, a star player or a player who normally starts goes down, can the next guy step up? Is it next man up or is there a big drop off there? And that's something that we try to fix uh, in, in the off season, I think we've we've done a very good job uh, of, of not having such a big drop off when we do take injuries or when someone is uh, unavailable, uh, possibly for national team duties or whatever have you. Um, so we just have to find a way of integrating them into things. We're we're being very cautious uh, the way we do with things um, as far as not rushing them back too too quickly. And then, uh, when you have the guys in their absence doing so well, it it kind of gives you that uh, luxury to be able to make sure. Uh, you slowly get them back into the swing of things. So that that's good that, you know, the guys who have stepped in have stepped up. Also, Turan, you know, he's a day-to-day. -day. Um, we are going to make a decision on that, you know, within the next couple of days as far as his availability for this weekend. But um, he also is a big part of, of what we do. You see what has happened to us in two games now that he's had to come out of the game. You know, it's uh, it's, it's it's taken a toll on us uh, because uh, of the type of player he is and how, how good he is uh, back there. Thank you. Next, we'll go to Tom Bogert from The Athletic. 
Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Ezra, for taking the time. Um, kind of a little bit off topic and, and looking forward, you know, talking about Gutierrez as well as Chris Brady. The U-20 World Cup is coming up soon. I imagine the United States are going to announce their roster in the coming week weeks. Um, look, from your position as a head coach, what's it like balancing these decisions where you don't have to release the players? And I'm not sure if you are or aren't going to or if they get called. But like what goes into those decisions from your end for losing two players who have been key starters for you if you are to let them go or keeping them rather than letting them go to kind of this big tournament that, that the national team are trying to call them into? Well, yeah, you know, the, the answer to that is, is no, we will not be um, releasing those two players. Um, we, you know, discuss it at length um, as a staff um, uh, with the front office. Um, and we feel that because these uh, players are such integral part of our team, you know, two regular starters, uh, having them uh, being gone for such a long time during that time uh, would be detrimental for what uh to what we're trying to do here as a club and, and what our goals are as far as getting into the playoffs. Um, you know, our May schedule, if you look at it, it's it could be possibly seven or eight games uh, in just May alone. And so to not, not have these players, uh, along with some of the injuries that we have, um, will not be conducive to getting to our goal in the end. So in that, uh, in that aspect, we've decided that, you know, we will not let those two players go. You know, we understand the situation. Players want to represent their country. Um, but it's, it's something that we've discussed um, very, very thoroughly and decided that um, for the club's sake, it's best that these players stay on with us um, because they're regular starters. Had there been uh, players who are not playing much on the team, a decision would have been uh, much easier, I would probably lean towards letting them go. But because of how important they are to what we're trying to do here as a club, uh, we've decided that uh, we weren't going to let them, allow them to go to the, to the tournament. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from Hernan Espinosa from La Fiera Deportiva. Uh, good afternoon, Coach. Uh, I know you're not thinking about this right now, but I want your personal opinions about uh, confronting next week uh, San Luis FC, one of the best teams for, from the league right now. And also probably you're going to use some rotation for next week. Uh, I want to know your opinions and also if uh, any injuries update for some of the players. Thank you. Yeah, so um, we really don't want to focus on St. Louis right now um, because Nashville, it's not an easy task. Uh, having to go there and play, it's not going to be an easy task for us. So our focus right now uh, is on Nashville. Um, come Saturday night after the game, it will switch our focus to St. Louis. But I will say that St. Louis is a very good team. Um, it's not a typical expansion team. They've shown that in the in the MLS play um, so far. So that's a team, and we play them twice you know, within five day five days. You know, Tuesday and then again on Saturday. So it's two big matches coming up for us next week. Um, but uh, as far as right now, our focus is on Nashville. As far as the rest of the schedule and having to rotate, you know, that's something that we wanted to make sure that we did in the off seasons. Make sure we have players again that when we have to rotate, that is not such a big drop-off. I think last year, a lot of times, you know, it was a big drop-off from starters to uh, when we had to rotate, and it cost us, even in uh, the Open Cup, first round, being out. So we wanted to make sure that that didn't happen this year, and we've beefed up the squad a bit to avoid that. Um, so what I told the players this week during our reflection uh, about last week's game is, guys, listen, May is going to be a very congested schedule. Um, a lot of people are going to be called upon. And every player registered with the first team, signed with the first team, has to be ready to step up when their number gets called, if their number gets called. Um, because we're going to have to rotate. We, we just can't um, run out the same 11 uh, for the seven or possibly eight games uh, in, in 30 days or so. So um, the players are aware um, that, you know, rotations are coming and, uh, everyone is upbeat. Everyone is, is is really ready to step on and, and do their task. Um, but we, we we are expecting to have to rotate uh, our, our squad a bit. Thank you. We will go back to Brian Sandalo, and then after that, we'll do Joe chats. Um, yeah, just to Ezra, what was uh, the reaction of Brady and Gutierrez when you informed them that they were not going to be going to the U-20 World Cup? Well, this happened back in early in the year, I think February or so, sometime in, during preseason. And 
myself and 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 Pelly and and George sat down and and, and spoke with them uh, and, and explained to them our reasoning. Um, and of course, you know, every player wants to represent the country. Um, a U20 player, U20 World Cup, really wants to go there. But um, we, we we just explained to them our reasoning, and I think um, after a while they they understood. Of course, they really wanted to go. Um, they expressed that it was something that they were looking forward to. Um, and we didn't want to disappoint point them. We don't want to disappoint the U.S. Federation. But we have to take, um, you know, the, the priority here in this situation is uh, the Chicago Fire. And so we um, had to, you know, keep that in mind when we made that decision. You know, it was, it was not so much about, oh, we're just going to keep them from going. It's about we're keeping you from going, and this is the reason why. And I think after we explained to them, you know, our reasoning behind it, they were fine and they've been fine. They've both went on now. And they, like I said, this happened in preseason. They've had, you know, a pretty good start to the year. Uh, Guti has been very, very uh, influential uh, in what we're doing and the progress that we're making. And Chris has come up with some big saves also. So um, I think they understand, you know, what we're trying to do as a club and why the decision that we made uh, was such. Joe, your line is open. Thanks, E. Thanks, Ezra. I appreciate the time as always. Uh, considering the uh, questions around the availability of Carlos Tehran, we saw Mauricio come in in his stead uh, with Wyatt and Kendall not on the bench over the weekend. Is that a role potentially for Mauricio to fit into, or are you guys looking potentially more at the uh, traditional center backs of Wyatt and Kendall? Thanks. Yeah, well, certainly um, Wyatt and Kendall uh, are the, uh, the traditional center backs that will get, you know, the first call uh, well, as far as replacing one of the starters. Um, however, uh, Wyatt had a, a slight hamstring injury that he couldn't be on the, on the 20. Um, and it came down to taking uh, Mauricio or taking um, um, Kendall on the bench. And because Mauricio had that ability, that versatility to also play center back, um, we wanted, we decided to go with him because we needed cover uh, in the in his normal position, uh, one of the two pivots. Because Fede Navarro was just his second, uh, his first MLS start, um, and we had limited time where we can play. We knew he, we couldn't play him more than sixty minutes, or we would risk, you know, a re-injury there. So we knew he had to come out. Um, we know Gaston. Uh, is also not fully 100%, so there's a possibility that he would have to come out also. And we, we figured with, with having to possibly play Mauricio at one of the pivots, uh, bringing in him and, and Herbers, um, and the, the, his ability to be able to also play center back of the two, uh, Mauricio was, was the better choice to put on the bench. It just so happened that um, Carlos had to come out in the first half, and you know we, we had to put Mauricio... Uh, back at center back, but the intention was that Carlos would, you know, we'd finish the way we started in the back, and, and Mauricio would come in uh, to spell uh, either Gaston or um, or Fetty in the middle. But it didn't happen that way. But we were able to adjust because we 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 accounted for that j just in case, you know, because going into that game we had, you know, Shaq is coming off injury, Hyro is coming off injury, you know, Gaston is not fully hundred um, percent, and then Fetty is coming off injury that. You know, he was limited time. So we we had to juggle with a lot of um, um, scenarios um, as we plan uh, our 20 and, and our starting lineup. Um, and, you know, we were able to, you know, get through the match without any further uh, significant injuries beyond, you know, Carlos. Great. Hey. Thank, thank you, Joe. Thank you so much, Coach, for taking the time. Uh, we'll be back in just a few moments with Federico Navarro. Thanks, guys.
Vamos a empezar. Let's go ahead and get started. We will start with Brian Sandalo. Hey, Fede. Uh, thanks for making some time for us today. Uh, we, we appreciate it. Um, just wondering, um, you know, while you were gone and then, um, on, of course, on Saturday as well, when, when you weren't on the pitch, uh, the team has developed, a, I guess, a bad habit of giving up leads and late goals. What's your, uh, why do you think that's happened and how much of a difference do you think your presence will make uh, the next time the fire have a late lead to defend? Durante el tiempo que no estuviste por lesión y también en el último partido del sábado cuando no estuviste en el campo eh, porque ya había salido, el equipo ha desarrollado una mala costumbre de dejar que remonten el otro equipo o que empaten o perder el partido con una remontada en los últimos minutos. Eh, ¿qué, ¿Por qué crees que ha pasado eso y cuánta diferencia haces tú en el campo o cómo, puedes que, o cómo piensas que puedes hacer la diferencia uh, dentro del campo para que eso no suceda? No, bueno... Yo creo que no pasa por, por estar yo en el campo o estar fuera. Eh, yo creo que al compañero que lo hace por mí o lo, o lo estuvo haciendo por mí en, en estos partidos, lo hizo, lo, lo, lo hizo muy bien, lo hicieron muy bien, el equipo estaba funcionando demasiado bien. Incluso no es algo de ahora que, que nos remonten un partido, el año pasado, la temporada pasada, también tuvimos uno o dos partidos ahí también que, que estaba prácticamente controlado y los últimos minutos también estando yo en campo nos dieron vuelta a ese resultado eh, pero bueno yo creo que es algo, algo mental algo mental de, de, del grupo que, que estamos trabajando en eso el estar hasta el 100 en, eh, hasta el 100 mentalmente en los últimos minutos del partido que es cuando Así por decir, nos toca como sufrir por ahí un empate o una remontada. Pero bueno, eso ya, ya, ya calculo que después de, del último partido ya, ya la cabeza nuestra ya cambió. Ya, ya veo el equipo muchísimo mejor, ya esperando el partido que viene. No, well, I, I don't think that that happens uh, or that has anything to do with me being on the field or being off of the field. I think that my teammates that were on the field in my place um, and did everything very well. I think they, he or they, whoever it was, um, did a good job. And the team was has been playing really well um, in the last few matches. And it, it's also not something that's recent. It's something that even happened to us last season. So it, it's whether I was on the field or not, um, so we would be ahead. There were a couple of games where we were ahead. Um, and at the, in the final minutes, they either came back to tie or we lost a game um, in the final minutes. And that happened with me being on the team. So I think that it's something mental. Um, the group is working really hard on um, overcoming that and to being 100% focused up until the very end, the final moments of the match. So I think that after this last game, um, we are doing much better and we have our heads on straight. And um, I think that we're going to be ready to go and we're ready for the next game. Next question, Alex Calabresi. Men in Red 97. Hola, Fede, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo estás? Muy bien. Uh, uh, bien, bien. Uh, el equipo tiene muchos partidos en mayo. Uh, ¿Cómo te sientes físicamente ahora después de tu lesión? No, sí, ahora sí que se nos vienen demasiados partidos juntos, pero me voy sintiendo mucho mejor. El último partido me sentí muy bien, la verdad, al 100%. Todavía... Siento que me, me tengo que poner muchísimo mejor eh, a, al ritmo del equipo, ¿no? Eh, y siento que con, con los partidos que se vienen por delante lo voy a poder agarrar rápido, así que tranquilo por eso. Y bueno, 
contento ya de poder volver y aportar al equipo. The team has a lot of games in May. Um, how do you, how are you feeling um, as you come back from injury? Yeah, it's true that now we have a lot of games coming up um, all together in May, but I feel a lot better. Um, this last game, especially, I felt really good out on the field. I feel like I'm still working to get 100%, um, but I feel so much better um, in the last few games. And I think with all of the games together, I'm really going to be able to catch the rhythm and to catch up to the rhythm of the team as we're going. So um, we're ready and ready to face all the matches that are coming up. Ahora seguimos con Hernán Espinosa, La Fiera Deportiva. Hernán. Perdón, ahora sí. Fede, buenas tardes, ¿me escuchas? Buenas tardes. Sí, sí, te escucho. Sí. Quería saber eh, tu sensación uh, después de eh, estar lesionado y de volver a las canchas Tú dijiste que extrañaba las canchas y que, que, te, fa, que te falta todavía eh, el ritmo de juego con tus compañeros. Quería preguntarte eso. Y la segunda pregunta es eh, la opinión acerca de tus nuevos compañeros, las, las nuevas contrataciones que han llegado al FIRE, eh, tu, tu punto de vista de ellos. Gracias. No, bueno, no, sí, también contento de ya de, de poder estar a al 100 de poder estar a la parte de mis compañeros. La verdad que me tocó pasar un, un mes duro que no me podía recuperar. Que esas lesiones no son habituales en mí, pero bueno, siempre son barreras, ¿no? Y bueno, la, la pudimos pasar, así que bueno, contento, contento todavía, como dije antes, que eh, me queda ponerme muchísimo mejor todavía para, para seguir aportando muchísimo más al equipo. Y, y bueno, con eso tranquilo. Y con respecto a la, a la segunda pregunta, no, la verdad que eh, muy bien, muy bien. Tanto dentro como fuera del campo, las nuevas contrataciones muy bien, aportan demasiado al equipo, son, son jugadores de equipo. Y bueno, lo que más recato es que, eh, que siempre tiran para adelante, se, se unieron de la mejor manera y bueno, acá, ta, acá todos estamos para sumar. What are your feelings, the sensation uh, um, after having been out of, off the field with your injury for a long time? So you, you had mentioned that you missed being on the field. And um, second question, um, uh, your opinion on your new teammates, the new um, people that the fire have brought in to the team. Um, I'm very happy to be able to be at 100% and be with my teammates at 100%. Um, the truth is that it was a hard month for me because being out and not being able to recover quickly um, was something that was really difficult. Those injuries aren't usually something you see um, in me or something unusual for me. So I'm really happy now, um, working hard and getting back into the rhythm of things. And I'm really happy to be able to continue to um, bring something to the team. And the second, question. The second answer is um, very good, both on the field and off the field. The new players that have come in really bring a lot to the team. Um, they are excellent teammates. They're all really good team players, and they've come in um, with their head up and moving forward, um, and they've come in at 100%. So we're really um, happy that everyone is in and ready to um, bring something to the team and get points. Does anybody else uh, want to put their hand up or are we good with Fede? Okay. Fede, muchas gracias por tomar el tiempo. Gracias. Te lo agradecemos mucho. Thank Hello. you everyone for joining us today.